practice Kriya Yoga, you do not have to be a believer in God. You do not have to be a non-believer. You can be what you like to be and yet experience His joyous bliss and peace. That's the beauty of yoga. It doesn't, doesn't tell you. Religion tells you, be this, be that, be Hindu, be Christian, be Muslim, be Japanese, be this. Yoga tells you, be what you are, be what you like to be. But it even goes beyond that. It doesn't tell you anything. Know this, know that. And you yourself develop into the likeness of your own divinity. And as you practice the inner breath, you get to a state of concentration. When you get into the spinal cord in the Sushumna Nadi, you are concentrating. Your thoughts run away. You bring those thoughts. Your thoughts are running errands, running wild. Every time they run away, you bring them to your spine. They run again. You bring them back again. The next day they run less. They are more focused. And so on till they do not run at all. This bringing of the distracted mind to the purpose of its attention, this binding the mind to a particular object is called the process of concentration. Got it clear? Now as you go deeper within yourself, the mind is not intermittent. It doesn't keep running away every 10 minutes or 5 minutes. It's steady and long and deep and it flows with the river of light in your spine. When it continuously does that with no distraction, that concentration is termed meditation. And then you enter from the Sushumna channel into a subtler and deeper channel called the Vajra channel, the Vajra Nadi. And then, like you do concentration in the Sushumna Nadi, you do meditation in the Vajra Nadi. <coughs> that is, Dharna, concentration, and in the Vajra Nadi, Dhyan, which is meditation. Then as you practice in meditation, you go deeper and you lose the form of the flame and become the flame itself. You're so absorbed that then you enter a subtler psychic nerves deeper within yourself and are transformed into a state of samadhi, sabhikalpa samadhi. The atomic structure of the image of the flame of Lord Shiva breaks down and you yourself become one with the object of your meditation. This is called samadhi or a deep trance for lack of a better word. Then you enter to the state from dharna, dhyan to samadhi. Concentration, meditation and ecstasy. But this ecstasy, you break the atomic particles and get into the subatomic stature subatomic strata, where the flame of the Lord Shiva breaks down and then you only experience becoming the flame or the attributes of the flame which are joy and warmth and radiating light or the attributes of Shiva, Sat Chitanad. You are said to be in a state of Savikalpa Samadhi, the first state of ecstasy. Because from the atomic structure, your mind has entered the subatomic structure of electrons, protons and neutrons which have no form of pratyai, but they only have the attributes of the form of Shiva, the attributes of the fire and the flame. Then as you practice deeper and deeper, you go from the, the Chitra Nadi, where you are in the first stage of Savikalp Samadhi, the first stage of ecstasy, of expanded consciousness. You go to a second stage, where you lose that, and you enter the Brahma Nadi, the psychic nerve of God essence, where you lose all form and time and go into an indescribable state of the highest ecstasy of expanded consciousness called Nirvikalpa Samadhi. There is no time, no space, no object to meditate on and nothing. You are stripped to bare nakedness of your soul essence. You are gone into the Samadhi beyond relativity, 
But then again and again you come down to the samadhi of relativity and then you go up. But when you keep practicing that, then you lose your body, you lose all the, the, the subtler states of your psychic nerves, even the Brahmanadi, and you expand your soul consciousness, your finite soul expands to merge into infinite spirit. And this is perfect and perfect Brahma Nirvana or Kaivalya. The absolute moksha whose lesser states are the very states of enlightenment which I just described. So this has transformed you into an erratic mind which is running hither and thither into a perfect being who is goddessence himself. This is the importance of yoga. This is the importance of the Eastern method of yoga vidya, Brahma vidya, theosophia, God knowledge, theosophia means Theophilus means God and Sophia means knowledge, wisdom. So Brahma is Theo and Vidya is Sophia. Brahma Vidya, knowledge of God. And that is why Yoga is destined to become the purest, simplest, fastest and most dynamic way of self-realization and then God realization. The very last one from the Nirvikar Samadhi to the state which is the final realization which goes into Nirbij Samadhi, that is a state, a transition from self-realization to God realization. When you're in a state of self-realization, you realize that everything is God, I am God at the level of consciousness, humanity is one. And I am one with everyone. I am a server of humanity. I am humility. I am love. I am divinity. But this is still seeing God through the crystal glass of your mind. When the mind is shattered, the eye is shattered with it, then nothing remains. Nothing remains. All is Him in His infinite, ineffable consciousness of bliss. Mahadhyanana sthanana nadana bin akasha nahi vaha kaal kaha sab shunya ashunya ka hai pan hai ishwar bhi nirankar vaha He says there is no time, space, causation, meditation, concentration, nothing is there. Everything is beyond causation, space and time. The laws of physics break down and everything is the isness of the zero not zero. Everything is the isness of the zero not zero. God is a non-being. What is the person, what do I say in my poetry? God is a non-being essentiality. So God is nothing. As far as your matter is concerned and your tin ticking mind is concerned, which thinks it absorbs the universe, but is still in the ditch of its muddy waters of ego. So when you get to that state, you cannot say anything. Even me at this stage, I'm just giving you a pointer. So in the final realization, if you tell me to express, express it, it's impossible. Those who know it, tell it not. And those who tell it, know it not. So I'm professing neither. Steering clean of this subject and leaving it, leaving it to you yourself to experience. It is you who have to experience because for thousands of years people have tried to prove God and they have failed. For thousands of years people have tried to disprove God and they have also failed. God is not a subject of intellectual speculation or exposition or philosophy or idle words. God is of your own personal experience. And that's why yoga is the most scientific and divine way to get to the divine God essence.